Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Practice Course. In this video, we'll study SKLearn utilities for evaluating classifiers. So far, we learned how to train classifiers for binary, multi-class, and multi-label and output cases. Now we'll learn how to evaluate these classifiers with different scoring functions and with cross-validation. We'll also study how to set hyperparameters for these classifiers. Many cross-validation and hyperparameter tuning methods discussed in the regression context are also applicable in the classifiers. We'll not repeat this discussion and instead we'll focus only on additional methods that are specific to classifiers. Let's first study stratified cross-validation iterators. There may be issues like class imbalance in classification, which tend to impact the cross-validation folds. The overall class distribution and the ones in the folds may be different and this has implication in effective model training. sklearn.model-selection module provides three stratified APIs to create folds such that the overall class distribution is replicated in individual folds. The stratified k-fold, repeated stratified k-fold, and stratified shuffle split. The folds obtained by a stratified shuffle split may not be completely different. So stratified k-fold and repetitive uh, stratified k-fold is roughly equivalent to k-fold and stratified shuffle split is equivalent to shuffle split without stratification. So we have logistic regression CV which has support for inbuilt cross-validation for optimizing hyperparameters. The following are key parameters for hyperparameter tuning and cross-validation. CV that specifies cross-validation iterator, scoring that specifies scoring function to use for hyperparameter tuning, and CS specifies regularization strength to explain width. Let's see how to choose the best hyperparameters. We can set refit to true and when we set refit to true, we score the average across folds and values corresponding to the best score are selected. The final refit is performed with these parameters. If we set refit to false, then we get the coefficient, intercept and value of C that corresponds to the best scores across folds based on averaging. Now let's look at classification metrics implemented in sklearn. sklearn implements a bunch of classification scoring metrics based on true labels and predicted labels as input. Most of the scoring functions has the following signature. So the score is the name of the scoring function. It takes actual labels and predicted labels as input and returns the score. There are a variety of scoring metrics, accuracy score, balance accuracy score, top k score, ROC, AUC score, precision score, recall score, and F1 score. So these are a variety of scoring metrics that are implemented by sklearn. So balance accuracy score helps us to get the accuracy score in case of imbalanced data set. Whereas ROC, AUC score gives us the score under the uh, area under the curve of the ROC curve and precision recall and F1 score as we have been studying so far are the measures derived from the confusion matrix. Let's study confusion matrix. Confusion matrix evaluates classification accuracy by computing the confusion matrix with each row corresponding to the true class. So confusion matrix is implemented in sklearn.metric. So we can import the confusion matrix from sklearn.metric and we can compute the confusion matrix by, by providing the actual labels and the predicted labels. The ijth entry in the confusion matrix gives us the number of observations actually in group i that are predicted to be in group j. So here there are three labels and you can see that this value 2 so this is the this is the number of 
entries from label 0 which is predicted to be label 0. For example, this one are the entries from label 0, label, label 2 but they are actually predicted as label 0. So this is some kind of misclassification. This is another example of misclassification where actual label is 1 but the predicted label is 2. And this is an example of correct classification where the actual label is 2 and predicted label is also 2. So we can display confusion matrix in a pretty manner using confusion matrix display. So we can get the confusion matrix display based on the pre-calculated confusion matrix just as we saw. We can also calculate confusion matrix from estimator by providing the estimator object and the, the examples and the actual labels. Or we can also plot the confusion matrix from prediction where we provide the, the actual uh, labels and the predicted labels and based on that the confusion matrix display is, uh, is computed and then you have to call plot.show to uh, in order to show this confusion matrix on the screen. So we have classification underscore report utility that builds a text report showing the main classification matrix. So classification underscore report utility is again implemented in sklearn.metric. So it takes the actual labels and the predicted labels and produces a classification report. So it has got precision recall and F1 score by the class label. It also has accuracy as well as micro and weighted averages. We will see what micro, what macro and weighted averages in, in the subsequent slides. Escalon also supports precision recall curve and ROC AUC curve that helps us to gauge the performance of the classifier across probability thresholds. So precision underscore recall underscore curve is again implemented in sklearn.matrix and as, as like any other metric it just takes the actual labels and the predicted labels and it gives us the value of precision and recall for every threshold. We can take the output and plot it in form of a precision recall curve where we have recall on x-axis and precision on the y-axis. In the same manner we can also calculate ROC curve. So in case of ROC curve again we give the actual label and the predicted label and we get false positive rate, true positive rate for every threshold. And when we plot it we have FPR or false positive rate on the x-axis and true positive rate on the y-axis. So we get area under the ROC curve as a major from the ROC curve whereas from the precision recall curve we get what is called as average precision. So far we studied classification metrics for binary classification. Let us study how to extend these metrics to multi-class and multi-label problems. The key idea here is to treat the data as a collection of binary problems, one for each class, and an average binary metric calculations across a set of classes. So this is typically done with the average parameter, and the average takes various values that are macro, weighted, micro, samples, and none. So macro calculates a mean of binary metrics. Weighted average computes the average of binary metrics in which, each, uh, in which each class is weighted by the presence of the number of samples. Micro gives each sample class pair an equal contribution to the overall matrix. Samples calculate the metric over true and predicted classes for each sample in the evaluation data and returns their averages. And when we say average equal to none, we get an array with score for each class. In this video, 
we studied classification specific cross validation iterators they mainly make use of stratification we also studied different classification metrics implemented in sklearn and how to extend the binary metrics to multi learning setup